Hi guys, this is the shortened version for those of you who can't put up with 40 minutes of me. If you can't, it's not a problem. I totally understand it. Neither can my wife. Okay, this is part one. I look forward to seeing you in part two. Take care. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming back to Sean Cameron Photographic Chatting. What have we got today? Well, I've got three cameras underneath here and let's be honest, the title gave it away, didn't it? It gave the game away. I don't know what I'm wasting my time for, but I wanted a big build up because I'm that excited. So let's see what we've got. It's the long-awaited test of the D5, the Canon, and the F4. Well, it's been long-awaited by me, anyway. <laughs> so, we've got the Nikon D5, which is the top pro, uh, pro camera. If you draw a veil over the D6, which I think it's probably best to, We've got the Canon, which is a 1D Mark II N, manufactured in 2005. And you must have seen my box opening. You must have seen this baby's arrival. It's my F4, my Nikon F4 from back in 1988. Oh. If you saw my box opening, you'll know that this was the camera in my 20s I was desperate for. And it's taken me a while, but I finally got one. So, why a test between these three cameras? I'll throw it back at you. Why not? They were all pro cameras in their day. They all have merit. And in their own way, they're as good today as they were back then. And I will do five different categories of testing and mark them out of 10 just to make it exciting and we'll see how they got up, get on. Now, I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do this. I've never seen anything like it. So that's the reason why I'm doing it and that's why. If, <laughs> and I'm, I am excited about it. I think, it I, I think it's gonna be such a fun test. I'm gonna test them um, with, with sports uh, dog jumping, which is is my game. It's it's my it's my dog sport. Is it's how I make my money, um, and I'm going to test them against portraits because I do portraits as well. I'm a professional photographer. We we do a bit of everything nowadays. Let's be absolutely honest. Long are the gone are the days where we used to specialise in weddings or portraits or studio. Anyone that's a professional photographer now tends to. Be a jack of all trades. And that, that's, that's how we pay the bills. I digress. I planned this and the first problem I had, or issue, or stumbling block, whatever you like to call it, um, was that I've got a 200 film in my film camera. Not a problem, but I think it's only fair to, to to do ISO 200 on both of these as well, because that, that, that makes it fair, that balances the whole thing out. Issue two, before we even start. Yet again, to make it fair, I want the same 70 to 200 f uh, 2.8 lens um, on both the Nikons, because I've got two, so it, it seems only fair to try them with that. But of course, sensors are a completely different matter. So I'm, I cheerfully put this, this on this camera. And of course, all of a sudden, the information I've got isn't working. Or it's at least restricting me because there is no way with modern lenses that this poor old camera could adjust the aperture. For as old as me, you'll remember the lenses where you adjusted the aperture by hand. You had a little little ring on it, and, and that's how you set the aperture, the manual, manual way. That's what this was designed for. So I'm told 
that the only thing I'm going to get with it is um, shutter priority and programming in program. That's cool. That's that's fine. We'll deal with that. We'll we'll shutter priority is absolutely fine. I can work with that. But the camera automatically sets it to its widest aperture, um, which in this case will be 2.8. So I shall set all the other cameras, the other two cameras up to 2.8 as well. Um, somewhat challenging um, <laughs> over a, a dog jumping a fence, but we'll deal with it. But ideal for portraiture. Anyway, those were the, the two issues I thought I'd let you know about. Um, and let's now move on and see how I get on with the sports part. Okay, see you soon. Hang on, hang on. I got so excited about doing the shoot, I forgot the first two sections. So let's rein back and start again. Okay, this section, the first section that I'm gonna mark is about how the camera feels in the hand. And it's about the engineering, the feel, the switches and the dials. So let's start with the, with the D5. Now to be quite honest, oh, if the D5 doesn't feel comfortable in my hand, then there's something seriously wrong and I need to worry because I've been using this camera for, oh, about four years since it was first released. And yes, it, it, it it feels comfortable as it should do. It feels, it sits in my palm nicely. It's balanced. Switches, the dials, they're comfortable. They are, they're easy to use. They're soft to use, if that makes sense. They're easy to switch to the wrong thing but they're easy to use nonetheless. Um, so yeah, it's uh, for a piece of electronic engineering, it's got it all really, uh, it's all there. I can't, I can't see many things that I, I, I would wish would be on it that aren't. So I'm not gonna tell you the score now, I will, but I'm not at the moment. Okay, on with the Canon. Now remember, this is a 15 year old camera. And the first thing you'll notice is I've got a smaller lens on it than the others. Now, to be honest with you, this is used for training. Um, I don't use it as my day-to-day -day cameras. Um, so therefore I'm, I'm not going to invest <laughs> in, in glass that I don't need. Uh, the lens that's on it is perfectly good. It'll do the job. It'll 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 do the job compared to these two lenses. Um, I'll make sure that this is a, a 135. It's a, uh, a 28 to 135. I'll make sure that I do these at 135 as well to make it fair. Um, and let's get the first impressions. Well, my first impression is it's a little bit awkward. Is it taller than the... No, it's no, not much taller than the, the D5. But it feels like it wants to tilt back. It doesn't sit in my palm comfortably. It doesn't feel balanced. Now, you'll be thinking to yourself, that's because it's got a smaller, lighter lens on it. Well, I can put lighter lenses on those ones, in my, on my D5, and it's still as comfortable. So there's something not quite as comfortable with this one. Um, let's see the switches. Yep, they're pretty solid. Canon don't want you to make a mistake. They don't want you to flick a switch accidentally. Um, so they, they double bag it or they make the switches pretty solid. Um, and these are no exception. Um, they're not going to wear out, are they? And they're pretty heavily engineered. Um, they're solid and 
I would say they probably, they, they feel positive. The switches feel positive is probably the best thing. I was like, the only thing I've got concerns about is how top heavy it is. Now, I'm going to put it down. Now, before the Canon owners start getting cross with me as a, as a lifelong Nikon user, criticizing a Canon, let me make one thing absolutely clear. In my mind, there's no difference between Canon, Nikon, Sony, whatever you want to use, whatever floats your boat. The manufacturers are in it to make money. They don't produce rubbish. If they did, they'd be out of business. Yes, some cameras are better than others. Some lenses are better than others. But generally speaking, Canon and Nikon produce some stunning cameras and lenses. So I'm not biased. I stick with Nikon simply because that's what I've always had. So please don't have a go at me <laughs> for, for being daring to criticize a, a Canon. Don't worry, I will be singing its praises as we go along. But at the moment it feels top heavy. Just my opinion. Right, the F4. An even older camera, poor old girl. Now I do admit to being biased about this. And as, as I start out, I have to say, That it doesn't sit very comfortably in the palm. I don't know whether you can see, but there's actually a gap here where it needs to rest. And so I'm gonna have to shuffle it forward so it feels comfortable. And now I can barely reach the zoom ring. So let's try the dials. There's a lot of safety switches on this lens. Okay. It's actually made from, it's quite hefty. It's pretty solid. It's actually made from a substance, and I made a note of it, called alloy of copper silumin which is a cross between silicon and aluminium, apparently, and aluminium, or aluminium, for, for more friends in America. Uh, it's solid. It feels good. Funnily enough, it's cold compared to the, the normal plastic grips of, and rubber grips of, of the camera, but it, it's, apart from that bit, now I'm not gonna mark this, in this session, I'm going to give them all the mark in the next session. I told you I was biased about the old girl. Um, I like to help the aged, and she's getting on a bit, but she's got some tricks up her sleeve. So let's just wait until the next, the next one to mark her and see what she comes up with. Okay. So far, D5, I would say F4, Canon. But let's see it as it goes on. Okay, and by the way, you mustn't miss my next video. My next video is going to be, it was shot a couple of weeks ago, and it's the first time I've ever shot a Canon camera um, for real on a shoot. I hope it gives you a giggle in these times. I thought it was quite funny. Um, and yes, it was an experience. I was very much out of my depth. That's for another day. But please don't miss it. Okay, let's get on to... Uh, to the second one.
the second marking round. See you in a bit. Okay, it's boiling hot. We're outside. I found myself a bit of shade just to show you these cameras. Now, if you remember rightly, I wasn't going to give you the scores for the first section, which was the feel of camera, the initial feel, the engineering and everything. And the reason is I told you that the F4 had a bit of a secret. Now, I found it a little bit shallow here to hold, just a little bit shallow. It wasn't deep enough, but the D4 comes with the MB21 battery pack. Now there's two parts to it. There's batteries inside there. There's a screw that actually goes round that actually turns this screw here. So if we slide it on and I get it to seat correctly, pigeon just flew out. I think it was frightened of me, cameraman. There we go. It's seating nicely. I'm screwing it back together. And now I'm going to use the penny just to tighten it up. There we go. Yep, that's it. Attach the lens so it's ready to go. And now it's become the F4S. Simple as that. Not like today when it has to have different engineering, different things attached to it. Now, back in 84, you could actually turn your own camera into the next version. So, this section, well, before I get to that, see how comfortably it now sits in the hand. That is beautiful. It's beautifully balanced. There's a heck load of, um, cam uh, of batteries in there. And yeah, it's sat very, very nicely. So that rather changes the schools, doesn't it? You hear that? Doesn't that sound gorgeous? Oof. So that changes the scores, doesn't it? Because it now sits comfortably. So I will say D5, eight. It's comfortable, it's great, I'm used to it. The switches, they're soft, they're easy to use. The Canon, if I remember rightly, it tips back in the hand a bit. I'm only gonna give that a six. Sorry, Canon users. Switches are a little bit sharp. They're a little bit hard to use, but it's that balance bit that I don't like. It'll have a chance to catch up though. But the F4S as this now is, well, you've got to give it, I was gonna give it a seven. It's gotta go nine now, hasn't it? It's got to be fair that it's only nine. It's gone to nine. So the next section is individualism adaptability. Well, how adaptable is this? I mean, you can get different data backs for it. You can get interchangeable focus screens. And you've just seen the battery grip that turns it from an F4 to an F4S. It's got many more batteries in it. And the way it screws in and the way it attaches and the way that it sounds, how can you not love that? How can you not love that? That has to be a full 10. Has to be a full 10. The engineering alone. Canon. This also has inter interchangeable focusing screens. So that's got to give it, um, it's well engineered. We, as we said, the switches are tight. They're, they're pretty, pretty solid. The switches sound good. 
So the individualism, mm, you can change the screen, you can change a little bit. Adaptability, yet again, we can change it. I'm gonna give that another six, okay? The D5. Well, there's no real adaptability. There's no real individualism. It is what it is. It's a fantastic bit of engineering, but it is what it is. You can't change it. If I've got two, I can't really, I can change them within the camera, but I can't actually change the, the camera itself. I can't alter any bits on it. I can't put new bits on it. So that's gonna have to be a four for this section. Yep, you heard it guys, the D5 is four out of 10 for this section. Oh well, I'm sure it'll catch up. On now with the shooting. Let's get a dog and let's get on with it. Okay guys, here we are outside and uh, I've set all the cameras to 200 ISO because of course the film I've got in the F4 is 200. Um, I'm going to first of all use the D5, then I'm going to do the Canon and then the glorious F4. I'm going to lay a microphone down here so hopefully you can pick up the F4, the sound of the F4. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of shots with each camera and we'll see how it goes and then we'll compare them. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let me just start talking about this section, which is about all about using the camera. The D5, I've been using this, as I said before, for about four years, and the D4S before that, and the D3 before that. So I would expect to be ho at home with it. It gives me confidence and immediate feedback. The focus is instantly fast and precise. It's, it is virtually instant. I'm going to give this a 10 to use. A 10 out of 10. It's a stunning camera. Okay. Okay, now the camera. Now the Canon it feels comfortingly solid. In fact, it feels like if I dropped it, I'd be replacing the floor rather than the camera. The focusing is quick. And it, I mean, it's really quick for its age. And I suspect it would probably be even faster with a top lens on it. Do you know this was released a full two years before Nikon's D3? Extraordinary, really. I've had a D3 and I think this would would have beaten the pants off it to be honest with you. Okay. I was really rather impressed. Impressed enough to give it an 8. I thought to do one extra shot just to make sure. Now the F4. The pure mechanical pleasure of using this. <laughs> I cannot describe it to you. It just feels gorgeous. Interestingly, I had to plan and compose the image with far more thought. When we set the jump up and everything, I did it really with the F4 in mind. The odd thing is, there's no immediate check. It's a bit like working blindfolded compared to how we are used to working with the digital. And I kept finding myself checking the camera back for the histogram. Later on, I've also forgotten how fiddly changing the film was. 
I must say I'm amazed that in 1988 the camera had an option to switch between the AFC and the AFS. The biggest problem I had was that I use ISO as a way of controlling shutter or aperture priority settings depending on which one I'm on. So as I now couldn't change the ISO without pushing the film of course, I had to change my change my technique considerably but it still gets a solid eight so this is the end of part one i look forward to seeing you in part two when we see those pictures i've just taken and the climactic final i bet you think you know who's won think again <laughs>